everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video I'm going to be talking about the IELTS test, which is the International English Language Testing System. I'm going to be talking through a bit about what the test is, how it's made up, um, resources that I used when I was studying for my IELTS and what you can expect on the day, things like that. So I've just got some notes with me so that I can try and keep on track. I did the academic version of the IELTS, there is also a general version, and I want to just make sure that I give you the information about both versions and try and get in as much information as possible so that despite which version you will be sitting, then you'll be able to get the information that you need. So the IELTS test is used for migration, work and study. It's used by a whole variety of different countries, including Australia, Canada, New Zealand and the United Kingdom. As I said, there's two versions of the test. There's the academic version and something called um, general study. So the academic version is used mostly for people who are planning to do either undergraduate or postgraduate study or people who are planning to move to another country and want to get professional registration in that country. So for example, I was moving here as a nurse and I needed to register as a nurse. So that was why I had to sit the IELTS test. There is also a version of IELTS called general study, and that's for people who are planning to do study that's below degree level or for people who are migrating but they don't specifically need to do the academic version of IELTS for their visa. So both tests will look at your skills in listening, reading, writing and speaking in English. And both tests take the same amount of time, so it's about two and three quarter hours in total. So when you go to sit your test, then you will sit the listening, reading and writing all in one go continuously without any breaks in between and then the speaking test you will do separately. You might do that on the same day or you might do it on a different day. I believe you can do it up to a week in advance or up to a week after the rest of your testing happens. For your listening test that will take 30 minutes and it's the same test regardless of whether you're sitting the academic version or the general skills version. And it just consists of listening to four recordings um, of people who are native English speakers and then answering a series of questions based on what you are listening to. Um, this is probably fairly straightforward for people who are native English speakers, but might be a bit more difficult if English is not your first language. What I will say is that there are certain things that seem to be in there to try and catch you out. So don't just assume that it's going to be really straightforward even if English is your first language. The second part of your test is the reading test. So that is 60 minutes long and consists of 40 questions. So for the academic part of that, then you will get three long texts which are taken from books, journals, newspapers or magazines and they're designed to be quite in depth. Um, so something that you would probably come across if you were doing academic study. Um, for the general skills, then you will get shorter extracts which are taken from books, newspapers, magazines notices, adverts, and uh, things that you would generally come across more in your day-to-day -day life rather than through academic study. Um, so same amount of questions for each one, it's just that if you're doing the general skills then it's more day-to-day -day kinds of articles that you're going to come across. In the academic one then it's more academic kind of uh, text that you're going to come across in your questions. For the writing test, um, this lasts 60 minutes and it's split into two parts. So if you're sitting the academic version, then task one, you'll be presented with either a table, a chart or a graph. Um, and then you have to summarize the information that is presented in that in your own words. So sometimes you'll just be given 
one bar graph, for example, sometimes you will get two, and then you have to compare the information that's in the two of them. Um, if it's just one, then you just have to summarize the information that's in that one chart, graph, whatever it is. Um, then for your second task, then you have to write an essay in response to either a point of view, an argument, or a problem, and you have to use a very formal writing style. If you're doing the general test, then for task one, then you're presented with a situation and you have to write a letter either asking for more information about that situation or um, describing the situation to somebody. So it can be written in either a personal style, a semi-formal style or a completely formal style depending on how you feel like writing it. For your second task, then again, you will be writing an essay, um, which is the same as what you would be doing if you were sitting the academic test, but um, you can use an informal writing style. So the last part of it is the speaking test. And as I said, you could do this on the day of your test, or you might be doing it on a different day. When I did my test, then my speaking test was quite late in the afternoon of the same day. And it lasts between 11 and 14 minutes generally, and it's split into three different sections. So this test will be the same regardless of whether you sit the academic test or the general test. And what they do is for the first part, they will be asking you some basic information about yourself. Where do you live? What do you do for work? What are your interests? Um, this lasts for about four to five minutes. Then for part two, they will give you a card which has a topic on it. You get one minute to sit and look at the card and think about some ideas of what you could speak about. And then at the end of that time, then you have two minutes to talk continuously about that topic. The interviewer might then ask you some questions, they might ask you one or two questions. And then for part three, then they will ask you some more questions relating to the topic that you got in task two. So I thought I might tell you a little bit about what to expect on the day of your test. You will be expected to turn up quite a while in advance, at least half an hour in advance of your test, because generally, there will be quite a lot of people sitting the IELTS test at the same time. So you go in and you have to register, they'll check your name, they'll check your photo ID that you have to take with you to prove that you are who you say you are and you're not getting somebody else to take the test on your behalf. Then you'll go into a room where you can leave personal belongings so you aren't allowed to take things like coats and uh, bags into the testing room with you. You have to leave things like mobile phones, so don't take too many valuables to the test with you. When you go into the testing room, then you'll just have a few basic things with you. Some pens to write with. You need to have your photo ID with you on the corner of your desk so that the people that are taking the test can check that people are who they say they are at any point throughout the test and you haven't gone out to the bathroom and swapped with somebody else in the middle of the test. You'll also have a candidate number and you have to have that on display as well. It's also important because you need to write your candidate number on all of your answer sheets. So before each stage of the test then you will get your question books and your answer sheets they will explain how to fill them out, where to put your candidate number, and um, you're not allowed to open your question books until the start of each section. And then after each section is completed, they will collect in those question books, answer sheets, and give you out the ones for the next portion of the test. There was a few different resources that I used when I was studying for my test. I set the academic IELTS test, as I said, this was because I was moving here as a nurse and it was a requirement that I had to sit the academic test. So I use the two IELTS official practice materials books. I find these really helpful just because they've got some past papers in them. 
And also in the back it's got a DVD that you can use for the listening part of the test. Um, I did print out answer sheets so that I could use these when I would go through the tests and I could just write on my answers. Uh, these are the same as the kind of answer sheets that you will get handed out when you go in to sit your test. Another thing that I did was I used past papers that I found online. I actually made myself up a really big thick booklet full of different past papers and I used to take it with me to work so that I could sit on my break and just do past papers um, during my breaks. But I think that I actually ended up recycling that when <laughs> I'd finished doing my IELTS test because I didn't feel that I needed that anymore. And it was just something that I'd made myself, it wasn't like an official thing. But if you just look up IELTS past papers, then there will be loads of places online that you can find all the previous IELTS tests. And it's good to find examples of other people's answers so that you can see what's right with them and what's wrong about them. The third thing that I found really helpful was a YouTube channel called IELTS Ryan and I'll leave a link to his channel in the description bar below so that you can go and check it out. He gives really good advice on how to get very good scores on the IELTS test and I think if I hadn't checked out his channel then I probably would not have got the overall score of 9 that I managed to achieve. The main things that I found it useful for were learning how to structure my essays for the writing part of the test so how to uh, break it down. I think because when it comes to the writing part you can be given any topic whatsoever then the most important thing that you can learn is how to structure your answers. Once you know how to structure your answers then you really only have to come up with a few different arguments that you can make and then you can answer any question that's thrown at you. So if you check out his channel, then you will be able to learn how to structure your answers for any kind of argument that you have to make, and then you can apply it to any situation. And I think that's one of the most useful things that I learned. Now, you might be wondering, does a native English speaker have to sit an IELTS test in order to move to Australia? And the answer to that question is not necessarily. So, if you are from a native English speaking country, specifically the UK, Ireland, Canada, New Zealand or America, you're a citizen of that country and you hold a passport for that country, then you are classed as having competent English. So that will get you an automatic score of 6 on the IELTS. The only thing about that is a score of 6 on the IELTS does not get you any points towards an Australian visa. If you want to get points towards your Australian visa then you need to have a score of at least 7. A score of 7 will get you 10 points towards your visa and a score of 8 or 9 will get you 20 points towards your visa. So although you might not necessarily have to sit the IELTS test then it's often a good idea to sit it anyway because it will get you extra points and it will make it more likely that you will be picked to get a visa. Another question is do I have to study if I'm a native English speaker and I would say definitely because even as a native English speaker then you could sit down to do an English test and still completely fail. And that's because you just don't know how the test is going to be structured. You don't know how to manage your time properly until you sit down and study for it. And you don't really know what's expected of you. So one of the things that you need to know about the IELTS test is that they're looking for the range of vocabulary that you have. 
So for example, when you're doing your writing test, if you want to say that something has decreased when you're describing a trend um, during task one, for example, then don't say decreased the next time that you want to describe that thing. Next time that you say the same thing, then you would want to say that it fell or it reduced or it lowered. So you want to demonstrate that you have a wide range of vocabulary. If you say the same thing in the same way repeatedly, then that demonstrates that you have a very limited range of vocabulary and that shows that your grasp of the English language is not high enough. Now, generally in day-to-day -day life, we don't go around thinking about how we are describing things and making sure that we always use different words to describe the same thing. But when you're studying for the IELTS test, then this is something that is very important. For things like the reading part of the test, things like time management can be very difficult. So the more that you study, the quicker that you should get at finding information within the text that you're given. And it should be much easier for you to be able to get through that part of the test within the time limit that's given to you. So I hope that's helped to explain a bit about the IELTS test. If you've got any questions for me, then please leave them in the comment section below. Um, give me a like if you have enjoyed the video, subscribe if you want to see more from me, and I will see you next time.